And again, uh, today I'm going to be looking at a pressure washer. The customer hasn't run it in a long time. They finally got it running, but they said there's no pressure. Uh, checked it out, sure enough, there's no pressure, just tap pressure. That's it. Uh, so we're going to figure out what's wrong with it today. Uh, as I've said before, this is a working shop, so there's times I have to stop and help my customers, but otherwise I try to run my video straight through. So you're seeing live equipment, this is or the recorded equipment. This isn't set up for the videos and whatnot. These are actual pieces of equipment coming in by my customers. Um, before we get started, we always want to talk about safety, where appropriate safety gear. You don't want to get hurt trying to do this. I'm just here trying to help you out on the job. And with saying that, this is no substitution for taking your stuff to a good certified shop as well. So the shop's going to look at a lot of other things that uh, uh, we're not going to address in the videos. These are just to help you out on a job, to get you through a job, or to get you started on a job. So, as I mentioned, there's absolutely no pressure on this. Uh, turn the pressure up on the unloader. That's the unloader. Turned it up. Nothing. It's, it's just like it's peeing. So we're going to take the plugs off and look at each one of the valves. I went ahead and loosened these. This is a general pump. This is a Mighty M pressure washer with a general pump. Really good pump. And uh, I went ahead and loosened the plugs because they can be very difficult to get off of these pumps. We're going to take one of the time out of here. That, that valve actually come right out with the plug. So that's, that's the valve right there. For it to come out with the plug is not a big deal. So what we're looking for, let's come over here, let's see if we can get this thing to focus. There's a disc right there, and that disc should, should move, and it's not moving, it's stuck. So ah, there you go, you probably heard that snap, so that's, that valve was just stuck in the down position. And with the valve stuck, water can't flow, so that one's now moving. I hope you can see it. My camera crew, lighting crew, editors, directors are all off today. So we're gonna put this one back in. There's an O-ring in there. So if the O-ring comes out, it sits right here. So we're gonna place this one back in. I'm gonna make sure it's in there flat and snug. We don't wanna crush it with a plug. We go to the next one. Oh, we're tightening it, we don't wanna do that. <clears throat> that plug came out, uh, uh, valve came out as well. So, let's see if this will do the same thing it did a minute ago. That disc, yep, it's stuck. Uh, popped it loose. So now it moves. I'm going to put this one back in there. This can happen when it sits for a long time. There's no water in the system, which you don't want water in the system because if it freezes, it's gonna damage your pump, be a lot more expensive. So when you, when you store these for any length of time, you wanna put antifreeze in the block. So you can take a short piece of garden hose over here, put antifreeze into it until it comes out through here. I need to do a video on that. I've never done one, I don't believe, but I'm going to do one of those just so everybody can see the proper way to store it, cold weather or long term. So I'm going to do the same thing. Pushing. Nope. Now it's broke loose. Now it doesn't hurt anything for that to happen. It just, you get no pressure. I like to do the bottom ones first because it drains any trash out of the pump itself. These valves didn't come out. Let me just show you what we're doing here. See that little white dot? That's the nipple on the end of the valve. So you just grab a hold of it, pull up. And it'll come out. Grab my pig. Yeah, these are. This one's fine. It's already loose. 
Something else you want to look for is that disc. If you got a piece of sand or something trapped between the disc and this collar so that it's not closing all the way, that'll cause an issue of low pressure as well. Putting that one back. The top don't, this one's good. The top don't usually uh, stick like the bottom uh, valves do because as the water begins to evaporate from the system, it evaporates from the top first. So the bottom ones sit in the water longer. And you notice they had kind of a rusty looking color to them. That's because they sat in the water a lot longer. The upper ones don't sit in the water as long. Good on that one. So because of that, they don't, uh, they don't develop that rusty haze to it, which will cause, is what causes the actual sticking of the valve. So we're going to tighten these up so it's going to get loud for a minute. So we've checked the valves. The valves are actually working order now. They were stuck, um, but they're in working order now. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to torque these down. I don't remember the torque specs right off the top of my head, so I'm going to have to look them up. But I am going to torque these down. I cleaned the, the uh, filter out of it earlier. There's a lot of sand in it. So I cleaned that out. I did run water through it initially so I could determine if it had pressure in a bunch of crud come out of the uh, the outlet. So I always recommend two things when you're using your pressure washer. Take your garden hose, run it with water first to make sure nothing's crawled up in there and stuck. Uh, when you hook it up, no hose. On your pressure, turn it on and let it run to flush what's in here out. You'll, a lot of times you'll see crap come out of here that gets stuck in your tips and whatnot. Let it flush for a minute, then turn it off, put your pressure hose on, and go about your business. So I'm going to torque these down. I'm going to take this outside, and we're going to see if it uh, has pressure now. All right, here we go. We're going to see if we can do this one-handed. I got the uh, filter off simply because it was an old filter. It hadn't started in a while, so I shot some uh, starter fluid in it to get it going the first go. Okay, initially you probably heard when I was running this, it, the pressure was good, sitting at about 4,000 PSI. When I pulled the trigger, it began to, uh, the pressure dropped tremendously and it was rattling. That rattling is called cavitation. So what happens is your pump is not getting enough water. Because it's not getting enough water, it actually causes the water to foam inside. So that causes that rattle that you heard. And it, it, it's hard to get that noise sometimes. It's been hard to make a video on that because it don't just happen a lot of times. So what it is, it wasn't getting enough water. Uh, and it will cause damage over time if you keep running your pump this way. So I had to go over and look and realize that my water was not turned all the way open to get the maximum amount of water to the pump. So the pumps have to have enough water to run or else they will cavitate. But you can see the pressure now. We're sitting on the white tip. We're sitting at about 3,300 out of a 4,000 PSI unit which is where you want it. The smaller your degree tip goes to a zero degree tip, it's gonna stay closer to whatever the maximum is for the pump. This is a 4,000 PSI pump. With a zero degree tip, you pull the trigger, you're gonna drop down to about 3,800, and it's gonna incrementally drop down in pressure uh, as you increase the size of the degree on your tip because your, your orifice actually opens up and you're getting more water. Uh, the more water you get, the machine can struggle because it's trying to keep up with that amount sometimes. 
but otherwise that's it you saw the valves they were definitely stuck now we've got good pressure everything's good to go with the machine if you got any questions uh, find me on Facebook and I can help you out directly there or drop them in the comments below otherwise you guys be safe call your mama tell you love her